We'll go ahead and move to textures. And to be perfectly honest, uh, more than likely I could spend three days talking about rendering. It gets me excited, I apologize. But uh, we're, we're condensing it here just so we can give a nice showcase of all the different things that rendering entails in Vectorworks. So here we'll talk about textures. This is an example of the kind of textures you can make. Uh, there's relatively simple ones. See here, this is the Chrome I was talking about. And these didn't take long. I maybe spent two hours just going through and making some interesting looking textures. But these take advantage of a couple of different things that we're going to talk about in a moment. This is a very simple reflectivity texture. It's Chrome, and you can see I've given it an environment. So it has a, there's, you can see the edges there. There was a black table I sort of gave it to sit on, and there's a sky. So because I gave it, and that's an HDRI background, because I gave it that HDRI background, we're able to see the blue reflectivity to it. If I hadn't given it that, you would have this gray block and then either black or white nothingness going off in the distance, and that looks strange. So this is the example of doing an environment appropriate for a color. Uh, these over here, and there's the red, similar to what we made earlier. Now see here, this is a wood texture, and it looks almost as if it's 3D, but it's not really. This is what's called a bump map, which we'll, um, we'll show in just a bit. Uh, and it's designed to look to do wood, and this is auto-align plane doing its thing also. See how the each time it changes direction, the face, it actually uses a different mapping direction? This is auto-align plane trying to guess the closest thing to being correct. Now, of course, with real wood, if you carved an object out of wood, it would never look like this. The wood grain wouldn't change just because I dug into the surface of the object. But it generally takes quite a bit of staring in order to notice something like that, so usually you can get away with it quite a bit. Uh, something more simple like uh, cement here. This is just, I believe, polished cement flooring. You don't see those lines because when this image changes direction, it's not obvious. So when this changes from this face to that slight angle to this here, you almost see no blending problems whatsoever. Here, it flat out changes direction, so it's a little more obvious, and there's seams in the line here. So it's all about what you need. This here is a combination, just sort of an ebony lacquered wood. Uh, I have a bump map, which is giving it the appearance of having little jagged objects lined into it, but these are the same object. I haven't changed the surface of this object at all, it's just a texture. So it's a texture doing basically material work. Uh, I have a reflectivity shine to this, but not the whole thing. So uh, this is what's called a reflectivity map, so only certain parts of this object are shiny, the little divots are not. And then here, this one is distorting light, and you can see here I, I should have turned it a little higher. See these facets? in the model here, these little lines, these little squares. That's just because I didn't have the uh, geometry turned up very high. I must have been in a hurry. But this is sort of a uh, lollipop candy texture. And you can just see it's sort of just a playful looking sort of broken molded candy. Generally, you don't need to make candy in Vectorworks, but it's just an example of something that you can do. Uh, and here we have a good example. Uh, this is a glow texture. So this is a texture that's actually emitting light. Um, if you would need this if you wanted to look directly at a fluorescent bulb or uh, neon lighting, you would want to use a glow texture. Not only does it provide light for the model, but it actually looks as if you had taken a picture of a light bulb, sort of just that impossible, you can't see it unless you were to turn it off look to it. And over here we have a very simple image, uh, sort of a natural plant texture. You can use this for like vines and ivy. And uh, the main thing I wanted to point out, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, all of these textures are contained in the texture object file, which will be attached or at the bottom of this video or in the page that you found this video on. And you can use them, enjoy. You can have them, take credit for it, we don't mind. We built this for you so that you guys can have these textures, use them for whatever you like. Uh, there's, here we go, here's an example of water. There we are. So this is what's called a displacement map. So it actually is physically looks like it, it. We didn't change the shape of this model at all, but it's physically modified the appearance of this object for this render. If I were to render that in OpenGL, it would just sort of be blue and clear. It wouldn't be so wobbly. Renderworks with displacement mapping turned on is capable of doing things like this, where it actually changes the geometry space. Uh, it's a good way of getting ice or natural uh, ripply water, river water. And here's another uh, instance where I've used transparency. So it looks like it's sort of perforated metal. Now again, this is an example of where auto-align plane doesn't know what it's doing, so it wasn't able to track it, but you can manually map these. Uh, this is actually a good way of making fencing too. Uh, this is just transparency, but this over here is a combination, and this looks pretty cool. This is a combination of what's called displacement mapping and image mask transparency. You can see that gray ball inside. That's because I 
uh, made this one so that it would work like fencing. So I, all I do is there's just a plane sitting in the document, but since I've applied this texture to it, it looks like I've actually made geometry. It's a very, not lazy, but it's a simpler way of making geometry that doesn't actually need to be there. If I don't need it to be in 3D, doing it with texture work, you can make textures do a lot of work for you. And here, of course, we have sort of a faked mud, uh, ben Grimm, Fantastic Four skin thing going on here. And this is another example of displacement mapping. There's little rivulets here, and they're actually projected upwards. So in this rendering, you can actually see this geometry. Here we have some matte flooring, and here we have another one that's pretty decent, and this is a, a rust map. So you can see it looks like a rusty pipe fitting. And that this one generally isn't showing so bad because rust is a little random anyway. But again, you can see that this is a mapping issue here. If you had a flat plane or just a pipe, this would look more obvious. This object in particular is designed to show off uh, how a texture is going to map to an object. It's designed to be a hard object. So you can actually use this object too if you're working on your own textures. Feel free to take the object. I believe it is in one of the rendering modes up here. One object, many textures. Yeah, if you go to that one, you can use that. That's an environment we made fake so that you can use that to uh, make your own textures some pink marble and some other ones. There's a few others included in that file as well. They're either in this file or that one. Uh, depends on whatever we put them in when we're done the video. Uh, but you're welcome to take these, use them, enjoy. They're for you.